Now, for more perspective on the situation in Uganda and overall press freedoms throughout Africa, we are pleased to have with us in the studio today Angelo Izama. He's a veteran Ugandan journalist, but also here in the U.S. as a UNESCO uh, Press Freedom Fellow. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Vincent. Now, we've seen uh, those images uh, watching that uh, package by Paul Ndiho. Uh, this sustained uh, kind of protests and uh, the crackdown by the security forces in Uganda, w w what can we make of this? What's happening? <clears throat> well, as you know, uh, Urim 70 just went through an election, which I think most people uh, concluded he won. Um, it was the most expensive election in Uganda's history. Uh, most of us were concerned about uh, inflation and rising food and, uh, and fuel prices going into this election, uh, but, it, but inflation jumped by double digits after it. And so even if um, he had turned around his political fortunes, it, pro it proved to be a poison chalice. Uh, because while the opposition seemed to have been a little bit out of their wits during the election and during the campaign, uh, these walk-to-work protests uh, were the first imaginative thing that they have done, and it struck a chord, particularly with uh, Kampala's growing uh, uh, poor underclass. Now, is there a fear uh, when you observe the reaction uh, of the government, a fear that this could grow into a big movement uh, that perhaps reminds the authorities there of what has been happening in North Africa? Well, North Africa, uh, the shadow of Tahrir Square, uh, I guess outside of Tunisia, Egypt, uh, I think Uganda is the only other place we have seen something similar. And yes, both the government and uh, the security agencies have reacted to this as if this is Egypt. Um, they have, uh, for instance, attempted to interfere with social media you know, by uh, shutting down certain websites. Uh, they have over-deployed in the city. Kampala has been a city under siege for almost three months for fear that uh, protests could come, especially if there had been a, a close election. Uh, I don't agree with the assessment. I think that uh, for a long time within the city, we have had um, like structural underpinnings, um, political societies that have emerged because Kampala you know, is a growing city of 3.5 million, even more. Uh, the economy is providing very few jobs. So, you would think that with any, an election win under his belt, uh, Yoram Seveni and uh, the NRM would be much more confident to make war on urban poverty instead of making war on the urban poor. Mm -hmm. But that is not what happened. Yeah. Now, you did mention uh, uh, something to do with the media, social media. But now, uh, overall, how is the press in Uganda operating within this atmosphere, this environment? Well, we are, we are really victims of uh, the way Ugandan politics is structured. There are no clear ideological uh, lines. It is not particularly high-minded politics. Issues of uh, public goods do not find their way into the political discourse, otherwise urban poverty, health would have. Uh, we are caught between the non-ideological struggle of the government and its opponents. Mm -hmm. And for years, journalists like me uh, have been uh, called oppositionists because essentially the platform that Uganda's opposition, like opposition movements around Africa, have, have embraced, that of accountability and um, human rights. These are traditional things that you and I report on. And, and I know I can mention this, yeah. that you have actually been personally sued by the president of Uganda, and that uh, kind of gives us a sense of what a journalist experience in Uganda. But uh, how do you look at, uh, you know, the whole the operation of the media? Uh, how, how much freedom is there now? In, in terms of the number of media businesses that are growing, um, that just shows you the demand side. Uh, but state-run media and state-controlled media, I think I would say, is about 70% of the entire uh, media space. Uh, private uh, entrepreneurs have come, especially during periods of political tension, under extreme pressure. And my own organization, as you know, has you know, survived under the full glare of uh, government's concerns. I think the biggest problem now is uh, that because there is a lot of anger, fear and confusion, 
on the Ugandan, but on the Ugandan state side, that journalists will be put at risk in the own, uh, in the in the coming days and months, mm -hmm. uh, but also will be forced to censure themselves uh, just to get by this, uh, to get over this difficult mm -hmm. situation. You know, thanks a lot. That's all the time we have. Uh, thanks a lot, Angelo. Thank you, uh, that's uh, Angelo Izama. I want to thank him. He's a Ugandan journalist uh, who joined us today right here on In Focus.